Hello guys and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be going over what I think are the 10 best teams to farm in the early to middle game. So let's start with one that's very popular here guys and it is a crew first order team. Now this team is popular in the early game and it stays popular well into the late game. So it's a very good team to invest in. It is more of a defensive team, however with the introduction of the first order TIE Pilot Omicron, which came out a while ago, you can definitely use this team on offense. So the team here is going to be Crew, Hux and Sift Trooper. They are the core and you can switch out Stormtrooper Officer. I've left these in because when you're farming you want the farms to be pretty easy uh, so crew is a hard node and a cantina node although the cantina node is probably the recommended one hux is a hard node but here's the thing guys you actually don't need to start him up and the reason being he is a very weird character in the sense that he can actually go to gear 12 at three stars four stars five stars he doesn't have a seven star requirement piece so if you want to leave him at a lower stars just to spread efficiency or make it more efficient in terms of your wider projects by all means do that um stormtrooper is a hard node farm officer is the cantina store and sift trooper is a hard node so there are a few hard nodes there guys but they are worth it the next thing is how many zetas does this team need this team needs at least three zetas one two and three now if you want to do the fourth one crew that's amazing and if you want to do this one it's going to make the team elite however this one is not mandatory uh, all stormtrooper zeta's doing is uh he basically counter attacks and then there's a 30 percent chance whenever he attacks that he calls an assist and it can be quite good so moving on to the next team on the list and this is one you guys probably expected and it is geos guys geos are always worth farming this is definitely a early to mid game team in late game geos are mainly used for cleanup and not really put on defense or if they are it's easy banners so this team here is pretty standard guys there's no alternate characters there is only geonosians uh, although there is a funny little strat you can do with chief chirper lead but that's for another video guys um so where do you get these characters well geo Brid alpha is a uh, cantina farm sunfak is a, a ship farm Geo Spy is also a ship farm, Poggle is Galactic War, and Soldier is Cantina uh, and Fleet Store. Now, these characters are very accessible. The only hard one to get will be Geo Brid Alpha because he is at, I think it's level 82 requirement. I said it may take you a while to get him, but honestly, guys, invest in these characters. They are so good. And, and they get you into a good guild as well. They are 100% a team worth investing in. And the best thing is, they only require one. Zeta and that is Geobrood Alpha's unique. The next team I'd recommend you guys invest in, I've left it blank because this one's up to your imagination. Whatever you want to do and that is going to be Palpatine and Vader. Now Vader will need at least one Zeta, Merciless Massacre, uh, ideally two, you also want no escape, don't worry about his lead because you're using Palpatine lead and Palpatine is going to need his lead Zeta um, and this is amazing. Uh, this team together, just Palpatine Vader, you then chuck in whoever you want. Mara Jade, Krennic, uh, Tarkin, <laughs> anyone you want goes in those last slots and you'll be beating lots of teams. Very, very powerful team, very low investment apart from the Zetas, 100% uh, worth you spending time to get. Moving on, we have one of the newer teams. Now, we've actually included a couple of new characters in here. Uh, we've got dash team now I'll split this up into two teams here guys because it's just you substitute one character uh dash i understand he's not accelerated and i understand he's a newer character but the team around him is very old in other words they're easy to gear up and we've spoken about this before on the channel now this is a great team to invest in especially beginning of the game like early game and middle game and it's another team that holds its value in the late game. In fact, Dash is very much becoming a meta team, a staple team. Um, it's very rare you don't see a good Dash on defense in the uh, high ends of Kyber, so Kyber 2 and Kyber 1. And, and it's very rare that you don't come up against an opponent who at least has a Dash team. So it is becoming a bit of a staple. And I only expect that to increase 
with time, especially once he becomes accelerated. So why is this team good? Well, firstly, you only need one Zeta for it to work, and that is Vandal Chewie. The other ones do not need a Zeta. However, Dash's Zeta is also very nice. So the, you, you need at least one to two. Kira, Young Han, and L3s are not mandatory here. Again, they are nice Zetas, but they are not mandatory. Um, and Young Lander does not need his. So you only need at least one to two Zetas, and then you need one Omicron. And out of these teams here, there's only a couple that utilize Omicrons. Uh, however, Dash is 100% is worth it. You can do some crazy stuff with this. Uh, and the nice thing is the team itself is easy to gear up. A lot easier than some of the other teams on this list because they're such old characters. Um, very, very good team. And you know what else is nice about this? It's going to work in Light Side Geo. Uh, you're also going to work in Raids. You're going to work everywhere across the board. It's a very, very powerful team. And now where do you get these characters? Well, Young Han's a guild store, L3 is Cantina, Vandal Tree is Hard Node, Kira is Cantina's farm, Dash is a Cantina farm. And then if you want to go Young Lando instead, he is a Fleet Node. And uh, now you can also switch Young Lando in for Kira, but I just like Kira because of the bonuses she's giving with her unit. A uh, very, very good team and 100% I recommend you farm this. Moving on, we have another team here, guys. And this one is going to be Troopers, and there's probably going to be a clip playing over the screen right now showing you the power of Troopers. Now, why have I only put three in here? Because this is the only three you're going to need. Now, if you want to put in the full five, you should at least bring four. But if you want to put in a full team, by all means, just chuck any Imperial Troopers in there. Range Troopers, typically the best. However, if you want to put Stark or if you want to put Wat Tambor or any of these other characters in there, feel free to do so. Um, very, very easy to get to. Now, mine are obviously high relics. You do not need this, and this is why it's a fantastic early to middle game team. And that is because you only need around about gear eight or nine. It's just a modding issue here, guys. As long as Pierre is faster, the majority of the time you're gonna beat and you're gonna punch up. Um, now, I'm not saying you can beat those relic nine bosks, which I hope you're not going up against, or all those sorts of teams, or the very, very uh, high relic Darth Revens. But what I am saying, is say you go up against a relic boss team as relic five and then the surrounding teams like relics you're going to be beating it and that is the awesome thing of imperial troopers they really really shoot up they have such a high ceiling um very very good team the only other issue is dark trooper is a newer character which means that he's harder to gear up but the team is worth it guys and if you want to farm it 100 go ahead because dark trooper is on an early node ps on a um early ish node Fears as well so it's an easy team to access not the easiest to gear because of dark trooper but the rest of the team is relatively easy it's a very very good team and i 100 recommend you farm this team if you haven't next up we have shakti clones this couldn't be uh, ignored uh, this team is insane it punches up really high um, you want the clones anyway for c pit and you also want them for cam missions so it's a fantastic team to invest in now shakti is the only hard one here to get because they are one of the last fleet nodes in the game so if you don't have a good hands to for a good fleet you're, gonna, you're not going to be able to farm her unfortunately however she is definitely worth the investment and this team is very powerful now in terms of relic levels you will want a relic fives and possibly a relic shakti everyone else can honestly be left to get 12 but we recommend you take them to relic five so that you can do the cam mission and seep it. Uh, but if you're being very uh, strict with where your gear goes and your resources, then by all means, um, just relic fires, relic Shakti. Because if Shakti dies, the team kind of stalls. And if fives dies, you're not going to get sacrificed. And if you saw my video the other day talking about um, Zetas, Fives has one of the best Zetas in the game because if the clone dies, if a clone trooper ally dies, he will sacrifice and share all of his stats. Now, when he shares his stats, he's basically making them equal to him. So, Echo, Arkham, Rex would all of a sudden go from gear 12 to like a relic 7 in power, which is amazing. So, definitely worth investing in this team. Next up, we have another new character, and I couldn't not include Aiden. Now guys, Aiden is a fantastic character. You can see I have a two-star Aiden. I know it's a bit of a meme, 
But the reason she's in here is because you can honestly leave her at two stars, you can leave her at three stars. If you missed the Iden event or wasn't playing, that's fine. Take your Iden to two stars and leave her. Because she will get the job done in GAC and Territory War. Um, and the team around her is an old team, so they're all very easy to gear. Very similar to the Dash team. You know, Stormtrooper, Magma Trooper, these are characters which are so easy to get. Cantina Store, Galactic War Store. And Death Trooper is Cantina. Stark can be swapped, but he is the best in this team. And like I said, this is a very easy team to get. Very easy team to gear. And Aiden just needs a Zeta. If you want to put the Omicron on, that's going to be huge. But you don't need it, necessarily. Uh, she's still going to do lots of work with just the Zeta. And the Zeta is going to keep her alive. We spoke about this in a recent video, which was on Zetas. Very, very good team. And I 100% recommend that each and every one of you watching this at least takes your item to two stars and Zetas them because they are such a good character. Next up, we have another new character, guys. Now, I couldn't not include Sortie. Same introduction as Iden, apparently. <laughs> They're just too good, guys. They take, you know, droids, which you have to farm for events, which is why I've included them here, and make them into a very good team. So, T3 is used for Darth Revan, which you may have decided to take them to gear 12 for the Malak event. I would actually recommend you do that now because of sorting. You got R2D2 who needs the one be done for CLS and two, and he needs to be relic seven for JML and he also needs to be relic for the Ray event. Uh, you got IG who is needed for executor at relic five and then you have BP8 who is needed at relic seven for the Ray event. And if you've gone down the route of first order, you most likely have a BB-8. So this team all of a sudden becomes very good. And where is Sorty farmable? Well, let me show you guys. She is farmable on one of the first missions, 3E hard. Now she's not accelerated, but she's such an early node. It doesn't matter, guys. She is a fantastic character. And the reason why you should all work on a sortie team is because you're probably all working on CLS, you're probably all working on Jedi Knight Revan and Darth Revan, and you're probably all working on Executor at some point. And if you're doing these three things, you're going to have these droids, and you don't want them to be sitting around doing nothing. Now, am I saying you need to relic the whole team? Absolutely not. Um, you will need to double Zeta sortie, so it's a bit of investment there. And the team does need Zetas, unfortunately. So you do need uh, some of the Zetas on BB-8, on IG, on R2. You do need the Zetas, but it's okay, guys. This is a bit of more of an investment in terms of uh, equipment for your characters. But overall, it's a great team at low cost. Definitely recommend. Next up, we have Mon Mothma. Now, fantastic team. And why is this on my early investment team? Because Kyle Katan's a new character. And the answer is, guys is such a good team you can't not have mon mothma uh now mon mothma herself will need two zetas she is on a hard node kalkatan is a cantina farm you don't necessarily need a zeta uh kara is a hard node you will need her zeta uh pal zeta is very good we've already established that and hoff rebel scout does not have a zeta but pal hoff rebel scout easy farms cantina farm and then um, these guys at Cantina as well. And um, Mon Mothma is a hard node. Very, very good team. And it's going to last you in light side geo. The other thing is Mon Mothma teams are used as geo cleanups, which is fantastic. Very, very good team. And 100% I recommend that all of you farm a Mothma team at some point. And the final team we have left blank is a bit similar to the Vader team in the sense that we've got Commander Luke and Han Solo. You can put anyone in these last slots. Now, obviously, the two Chewies and C-3PO would be best. However, I appreciate that not all of you have Chewie or C-3PO. So if you don't, any Rebels will do. Very, very good team. It can punch up a lot. We've seen it a lot in my gameplay and other people's gameplay, most likely. Very, very good team. Thank you all for watching. If you made it through to the end of the video, please consider liking and subscribing. It helps out the channel a bunch. Let me know in the comments, did you agree with my selection of teams? My name is Glermit, and I hope you'll have a Glermin day.